Elemental Part 9 of Blender 2.6, The Basics. In this video, we'll be talking all about how to create animation. In other words, how to create movement of objects and characters to create an animated movie. Now, it's important to know that people go to school and practice for a long time to learn how to animate objects and characters in really good-looking professional ways. It takes a long time to learn how to move objects to make them look like characters that have deliberate action and emotion to make a really good-looking professional animated movie. Luckily though, creating just simple movement of objects in Blender is actually quite easy. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll click on my splash screen to get rid of it and I'll turn on my screencast keys before we get started to let you see what I am pressing and clicking on my mouse most of the time. Now if you watch part two of this video series, you'll know that at the bottom of your screen is this window called your timeline. And if you've ever done any animation on a computer or any video editing on a computer, you'll know what a timeline is. A timeline is basically a representation of movie clips or keyframes of an animation uh, represented in frames left to right. In this timeline, we have 250 from 0 to 250 uh, frames available, although we can make the animation that we have available to us longer or shorter. Right now it's 250. I'm going to make it a little bit shorter by typing in 100. It's also important to know how fast, in other words, the frame rate of your animation will be or go. The way that we can check that in Blender is by going to our properties window, this left or this right hand window, and looking under the camera or render tab for the frame rate. And by default, it's set to 24 frames per second. That's what FPS stands for, frames per second. Um, and that's the standard for film. That was the old way of shooting movies, basically. Let's leave it at that, and let's go ahead and make an animation. Now, if you've ever like drawn a flip book before, in other words, you've drawn a drawing on a piece of paper in a book, and then you flip the paper over, to the next page and you draw almost the same picture but make a little bit of a change to it and you do the same thing again on the next page and the same thing again on the next page and then you flip through all your pages you'll see an animation that kind of animation is called cell animation which basically means 2d animation um, or it's also called frame by frame animation that takes a long time to do obviously because you have to do a lot of pictures one after another but luckily on a computer when you're making animation, you can only do just the main poses of an animation, which is called keyframe animation. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to go to my front orthographic view with the 1 and 5 keys, and we're going to make this cube go from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen. And to do that, um, we only have to make two keyframes, in other words, two main poses. We have to tell this cube to be over here, or to start over here, and end over here. The other important thing to know is when those two events are going to happen. In other words, when it's over here, we're going to tell it to be over here at frame one in our sequence of time, in our timeline. We're going to make the cube move from left to right, and we're going to make it take one second. In other words, 24 frames to get over to the right side of the screen. So to make this happen, to make animation actually record these keyframes, we have to press this record button on our timeline. And when this is on, whatever you do to any object will get automatically recorded to a keyframe. In other words, it's going to tell us, or the keyframe will record, wherever an object is at whatever time you move it there. So we're at frame 1 right now. I can tell that by looking down here. And I'm going to press G to grab the cube and move it over here. And as soon as I press uh, or I click to let go of the cube, it's going to make a keyframe of the cube at this location, at frame 1 because we have that red record button turned on. So I'm going to click, and as soon as I click to let go of that cube, it made a yellow line on our timeline where this green playhead is. What this yellow line means is it's a keyframe, and so we've told this cube to be at this location at frame 1. Let's go to frame 24, and so I'll just kind of go carefully, and so it's at 24 now and we're going to move the cube over to the right hand side of the screen. As soon as we move it there and let go, because we have that red record button turned on again, uh, it's going to put a keyframe at that location on the timeline telling the cube to be at this location at this time. And so now if I go back to the beginning of my timeline with this button right there and I press play, it'll play the animation of the cube going from left to right in a straight line. 
So that's basically how you create animation in Blender. Uh, it's a pretty simple process, although I will warn you that you need to turn off your red record button whenever you stop animating. Because if you have it on and you're not meaning to animate, what will happen is that you'll be putting keyframes on pretty much everything. Let's say I move my light or my camera, I would be putting keyframes on those things too, even when I don't mean to. So it's really important to have this button turned off when you don't want it on, and when you are animating, turn it on. That's basically kind of the rule that'll keep you safe. This is not all we can do in animation though. Right now we've only been moving the cube, and that's one kind of transformation data. There are three ways that we can move or transform an object. We can move the object, in other words, change its location. We can also rotate an object, and we can also scale an object. So we can animate in all those three different ways, location, rotation, and scale. You'll hear me say that a lot, and the kind of acronym for that is loc, rot, scale, location, rotation, scale. So in other words, we can take this animation, and I can make the cube start at this size and get a whole lot smaller uh, at this next keyframe. So I'm going to go to this frame 24, and if I want to zoom in on this timeline, I can just scroll up, and that will let me zoom in and see the frame ex frames exactly. If I want my cube to shrink, I just need to go to the second keyframe with the red record button turned on, and press S to scale it down, and grab it, and I'll put it on the ground. So now the animation will play back, and the cube will shrink. It's important to know that if I had not had that red record button turned on, and I had shrunk the cube, and I put it down, it didn't actually record that scale or that new movement onto this keyframe. You see it kind of pop back there, so I need to have this red record button turned on whenever I'm making a change that is animated. So I'll put it back down, and we'll go back to the beginning and press play, and there's the animation. Let's add in some rotation. I'm going to go to a frame at random between my two main keyframes, and I'm going to move my cube up. In other words, it's going to do now a jump to get to point A to, from point A to point B. And let's make the cube really big, and let's rotate it. And we are in 3D, so I'm going to rotate it in some kind of funny way. And I'll go back to frame 1, or my uh, front view. And I think that's it, so let's go back to the beginning, and I'll press play. The cube rotated a little bit and then went back. Let's go to the last keyframe and let's rotate the cube so it's facing or flipped over now. And right on the ground, we still had that record button turned on. And let's play it back. And it animates just like we want. Now you might be asking yourself, well, what happens if I want to delete a keyframe? We can't do it in this window. We have to add a new window and that new window is called a dope sheet, which is kind of like a super timeline. To make this new window, I'm gonna kind of divide this window in two by dragging down this little cross-hatched area to make or to split that window in two. And I'm gonna change this new window type to a dope sheet. A dope sheet in traditional animation was basically a piece of paper where animators would plan out an animation of a character and object in its keyframes. So a dope sheet was basically a piece of paper that let animators plan out what kind of main poses a character would need to take at what frames so that when they're animating they can actually keep track of the progress of their animation and it didn't end up at some random length and they were able to plan it out ahead of time. This is what the dope sheet is as well, although the dope sheet on Blender allows us to move keyframes, delete keyframes, and even scale entire animations to make them slower or quicker. You can zoom in on this dope sheet by, uh, by uh, scrolling up on your mouse wheel to zoom in and scrolling down to zoom out, just like on your timeline. Your keyframes in this dope sheet look a little bit different, they're diamonds, and you see multiple rows of them, but actually this is our same three keyframes. You can kind of ignore the fact that there's multiple rows. And these keyframes in the dope sheet allow us to select them by right clicking on them. So when you select any one of these rows, it selects just the entire keyframe. And if I press G, I can move a keyframe if I want to adjust like the timing of an animation. Um, if I want to delete a keyframe, I can select a keyframe and I can press X or delete if my mouse is in this window. Uh, there we go. And so now our animation is just point A to point B again with rotation. 
And if you look even more closely, if you kind of expand out these arrows, you can see that um, it actually will show you the location and the rotation and the scale keyframes on all three axes, X, Y, and Z. Although that's getting pretty technical, we'll just leave it kind of at the main level of, uh, of, of detail. Uh, if you want to make this animation slower, and you have a whole uh, complicated animation. So let's say that you make a character walking, and then you decide later on that you want the character to walk slower or faster. Well, what you can do is you can take this whole animation, so you can select all the keyframes. I can click and, oops, I can box select, so I can press B and box select the keyframes, or I can just press A to select all the keyframes or deselect them all. It's like the toggle again. And if you press S to scale, there we go. It actually scales the animation smaller to make it quicker or bigger to make it um, slower. If you want to control this a little bit better, the scaling actually happens in this window from this green playhead. So if I put this playhead right at the first keyframe and then I press S, it'll actually scale nicely to or, or from to make the animation slower or quicker based on where this playhead is. And let me show you what that looks like if we have more than two keyframes. If I grab uh, the cube with the record button turned on and I'm going to make it jump with a rotation and a scale. Let's give it some more kind of funny stuff in between. So we actually have Let's make it big in that keyframe. So now we have um, five keyframes, and we really want to keep this animation the way it is, but just make it slower or quicker. If I put my playhead at the first keyframe and select everything, so I press uh, A and A to make them all yellow, and I press S, I can make animation a whole lot slower by making the scale bigger. Obviously, that's a whole lot slower. And if I scale it down, obviously that'll be really, really quick. So that's animation in Blender. It's a pretty simple process, although making things look realistic, especially characters, can be quite a difficult process. The last thing I'll say here is that it's really important, again, to make sure that your record button is turned off if you do not want to be animating at that time. What will happen in your scene eventually is that if you forget that this is turned on, and you move your lights, your camera in your scene, you're going to actually be putting a keyframe on those objects and they could end up snapping back to their original location if you didn't mean to have one keyframe or any number of random keyframes on that object. So pay attention to where that is, uh, but that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.